Timothy Jackson Drake, the third Robin to take up the mantle, commonly referred to as Red Robin, the most underrated Robin out of the four. Each of the other three main Robins have an aspect to their character that makes them stand out and so beloved by many fans alike. Dick Grayson's the first and the shining example of using Batman's teachings to become a more lighthearted, heroic figure in the DC universe. Jason Todd is infamously known for being the Robin who died, then came back to life with a vengeance, but slowly growing as a character into his own vigilante type persona that sort of differs from Batman's moral compass. Damian Wayne is the actual biological son of Batman and not to mention he was essentially raised by ninjas since birth. But with Tim Drake, he seems to not get the center of attention as much in comparison to those that I just listed. Certain adaptations either don't get the true nature of the character or don't seem to grasp what makes him a cool addition to the Bat family. Did you pick up those donuts the other day? Yeah, been a while since we had a dozen of Robin's favorite plays, so yeah. You're welcome, pal. Thanks. You don't know how much they meant to me. <laughs> Is the room vibrating right right now? How much coffee have you had today, Tim? Twelve. Twelve? Hey, caffeine is Robin's superpower. <laughs> Gotham Knights writers cannot cook for their goddamn luck. But what makes him a really cool and compelling character is his overall competence and skill level as Batman's partner. So just how well versed and skilled is Tim Drake Robin? Well, let's find out. To briefly go over his origin, Tim Drake actually attended the circus performance by the Flying Graysons, in which Dick Grayson's parents fell to their deaths during the act due to the actions of Tony Zuko. A few years later, around the age of nine, Tim saw footage of Batman and Robin going after the Penguin on the news, in which he saw Dick Grayson Robin perform a quadruple somersault, which was the same move he performed when he was at the circus. Tim Drake's most valued asset is his detective skills and intelligence, which is shown at an early age when Tim is able to deduce the identities of Bruce Wayne Batman and Dick Grayson as Robin. Throughout the years, Tim essentially followed Batman's adventures wherever he could and noticed Batman's change of behavior after the death of Jason Todd Robin. Tim came to the realization that Batman needs a Robin to maintain his sanity and serve as Batman's moral compass. Tim originally confronted Dick Grayson now who became Nightwing to become Robin again to help Bruce, but Dick refuses to revert back to the mantle of Robin. When both Batman and Nightwing were captured by Two-Face, Tim quickly puts on the Robin costume in the Batcave and comes to the aid of the former dynamic duo. Batman was originally hesitant and reluctant to take in another Robin, but quickly saw potential in Tim and initiated him as the new Robin. He even got his own uniquely designed Robin suit, which differed from the designs of both Dick Grayson and Jason Todd. Before officially becoming Robin out in the field, Bruce made Tim go through intensive training overseas with several martial arts masters. While on a trial to find and go up against King Snake, Tim also encountered Lady Shiva and trained under her along with getting accustomed to his signature bow staff for the first time. And obviously Tim was trained in combat and detective work by Batman himself and gained more experience throughout the years. Tim Drake as Robin made a name for himself by being more of a detective and less of an acrobat or brawler. One example that shows Tim's true intellect was during the time when Bruce Wayne was presumed dead after following the events of Final Crisis. Tim Drake began operating more independently as Red Robin while Dick Grayson took on the mantle of Batman with Damian Wayne as his Robin. While most people had just convinced themselves that Bruce Wayne was dead, Tim on the other hand was determined to actually figuring out what happened to Bruce, as he discovered evidence of Bruce's true fate being lost in the time stream. Tim discovered Rachel Ghoul was using this as the opportunity to destroy the Wayne legacy and claim Batman's riches for his own. Rachel Ghoul planned for his agents to target Batman's allies to give himself an opening to steal the Wayne fortune, but Tim goes to confront Rache himself and get backup from other heroes to help Batman's allies allies like Superboy, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Huntress, etc. Red Robin reveals that when he had access to Rache Goggle's technology, he took the chance to memorize every shell company set up by the League before he'd even return to Gotham. Tim also investigated every location the League of Assassins owned in Gotham, tracking League ninjas long before they even arrived. Furious at this, Rache Goggle ends up challenging Tim Drake to a duel, but this was just Tim stalling and distracting Rache in order for Lucius Fox to complete the legal transfer of controlling shares of Wayne Enterprises to Tim Drake himself. This prevented Rache from completing his scheme, which would have seen the transfer of the Wayne Fortune and company to Rache al Ghul. This whole elaborate plan is really representative of Batman's usual prep time mentality, quote unquote, or the fact that he is usually 10 steps ahead of his opponents. This impressed Rache so much to the point where he referred to Tim as detective, which may not seem like a big deal, but the only other person he referred to as detective was Batman himself. And keep in mind, Rachel al Ghul is a villain who's lived for over 600 years due to prolonged exposure to the Lazarus Pit. Tim's intellect is even further highlighted when Batman himself and Batman Hush 
praises Tim's work as Robin. This iconic panel shows how Batman believes Tim to be the second best detective and thinks that one day Tim will surpass him in that category. Tim has also proven himself as a competent leader as a both member of the Teen Titans and Young Justice. He also built the Belfry, which was a base of operations used by the Bat family during James Tynion's Detective Comics run during the DC Rebirth relaunch of DC Comics. In this run, there is a future version of Tim Drake who travels back in time with the sole purpose of killing Catherine Kane. This future version simultaneously fights members of the Bat family at once as he stated he continuously fought holographic simulations of each Bat family member and meticulously studied their fighting styles and weaknesses. Just to show you what Tim Drake's full potential when it comes to his mind is capable of. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. As I've stated earlier, Tim Drake's been trained in a multitude of martial arts by different martial arts masters like Batman, Lady Shiva, Nightwing, etc. His signature bow staff gives him an edge with his fighting style. Due to his training with Batman, he's a master escape artist with a firm understanding of techniques including computer analysis, criminology, forensics, stealth slash disguise tactics, master strategist, and comes with typical Bat family gadgets with a utility belt carrying a grappling hook, shurikens, smoke pellets and a whole bunch of other technology and equipment in his arsenal. Tim Drake has more on occasion proven himself to be a worthy successor to Batman in the DC Universe and his pre-New 52 counterpart serves as one of the best renditions of the Bat family mythos. His intellect and critical analysis makes him a formidable opponent and stand out in comparison to the rest of the Bat family characters in DC Comics lore. I hope at some point in the future, whether it be through James Gunn's DC Universe or other media in general, Tim Drake finally gets some recognition and respect amongst casual audiences. His character sadly peaked during the post-crisis slash pre-New 52 era of DC Comics, as writers sadly have not really known what to do with him since then. Check it out. Ah! Oh, good morning, Rupert. Please tell me you set the timer on the coffee maker because I completely forgot. Ah! Hey, girl. Hey, can I get a couple of scratch-off lottery tickets? Oh, sure, Brian. Oh, Brian, can I do one? I love scratches. Oh, all right, maybe just one. Cherry. Another cherry. Oh, come on, one more, one more. Many fans of the character don't really pay too much attention, especially to the modern rendition of the character, as current day writing just hasn't done the character justice in any meaningful way for the most part. But with that being said, I'd highly recommend checking out those well-written pre-New 52 stories for Tim Drake to really show you why he deserves the mantle of Robin.